Happy Wednesday! I hope you guys are uh, joining in again Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Hope St. Patrick's Day was great. Maybe you ate some corned beef. I had some corned beef. So anyway, it was really good. And if you're new, don't worry about it. You don't have to watch Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. I do try to take what we've learned each day and build upon it. So if you can go back and watch Monday or Tuesday, you can find all the videos on the page under videos. So once this is not live and it ends, it will replay also with Monday and Tuesday. All the past videos are videos of my paint parties that I've done with my friends and customers. Uh, I don't teach a lesson on those. I just, you'll see what I've done in the past with my customers. So anyway, you can go to the page and find the past videos. Also, I just joined YouTube. I'm a little behind the times. I just created a, uh, you know, an artist at heart paint party page on YouTube. I have zero subscribers. <laughs> so if you guys are on YouTube and can subscribe to Artist at Heart Paint Party, then you will also see the videos on there. I know that some people, uh, especially children, do not have access to Facebook, which I totally get. So uh, again, if you can go to YouTube and do that, I think once I have 100 subscribers, then you'll be able to watch the videos or I can stream live. I'm not great in technology. So anyway, if you were not able to print out an animal or some kind of creature for today, all I want to do is talk about a couple different things you can do. And you can do it prior to, you don't have to do this little cartoon with us today. You can do it now. You can do it later. You don't have to do it at all. You could just kind of freestyle it. What I like to do, again, if you don't have a printer, half the time mine is jammed because I put something too thick in there and then I get it stuck. So you just kind of pull up an image on an iPad or on your computer screen and then take a thinner piece of paper, not tag board. Tag board is a little too thick. And then you take the paper and you overlay it on your iPad. Mm, my light is kind of hard to see. Let's see. Can you guys see that? So you can see, see the light when I show it to you guys. You can't see through it. But I can see through it. Oh, there you go. All right. So you can see through the light, and then you can trace your image, and then you can cut it out. So you could do the same thing on your computer screen. So let's pretend you don't have a computer. I know you do, you're do. you watching me on something now, but that's a trick. So again, pull up. So you go to Google Images, and then you look for free images. Find an animal you like. I didn't want to tell everybody to do a giraffe or an elephant today. If you want to do a dinosaur or a bat, someone said that they're doing a bat, do whatever you want. You don't have to do what I do. Do your own thing. So another trick you know, when I was in Cleveland, I was a Cleveland art teacher. We didn't have all this fancy stuff we have today. So old school, we would hold it up to the window. All right. So the lights outside it doesn't work in at nighttime, but you would put whatever it is you want to trace in the back of this and you would hold it up on the window and the natural light comes through and then you trace it. Okay. So those are a variety of ways you can get your image that you want, or you can draw it out guys. I mean, that's great practice. So do whatever works for you. All right, so I always like to warm up. So with our warm up today, I'm going to do an owl. He might look, she, it's really a she, she might look familiar. We did a male leprechaun yesterday, so we're going to do, you know who. If you guys don't know, that's okay. It's just an owl. So I'm going to start with a basic shape. I'm using a purple uh, Crayola, but you use whatever you want to draw. You know, the reason why I don't have a lot of kids draw with pencil is because they spend way too much time erasing and then they get far behind. So I say draw with a marker and if you make a mistake, it's a good practice. I like to call it a sloppy copy. Do a sloppy copy and you can do it again. It's practice. It's a warm up. So I'm going to start with an oval, but at the bottom of the oval, it's going to taper down almost like the bottom, you know, like a triangle. So I'm doing an owl. So round and then taper down. So here's my, I have on the back of my canvas today, I have a piece of paper. So I'm going to do an oval. Okay. 
I changed my setup. I'm on the other side today. I thought I could be closer to the computer to see the comments. I heard you guys were really uh, commenting a lot of funny things yesterday. So I want to make sure. I have two sisters and they were, you know, right in on the parties, you know, and someone was saying that theirs looked like a goat. And I, I didn't even show you guys, but one of my leprechauns looked like a little scarecrow. So it's okay. It's part of the process. It could be a scarecrow leprechaun. And what's wrong with a goat? Now you know how to draw a goat. All right. So anyways, there is the outline of my owl. Make his eyeballs big. Owls have big eyes. So again, I'm going to do almost like an egg shape, an oval. So this one I'm going to make looking at me. So I'm going to do half circles here, half circle, half circle. You guys see that? I'm going to color mine in just so you can see it better. Hi. You're looking at me. She's looking at me. All right. A little beak. A little beak. A little triangle. I'm going to use a little triangle. It could be pointy on top or pointy on the bottom. Totally up to you. I'm going to do mine so that it's the points down. And again, you can color it in later. I just am coloring mine in so you can see it from far away. And a scarf, because you know what? It's a little cold today. I don't know where you are, but here is chilly. There was frost on the grass. I hear it's supposed to snow again in Cleveland, Ohio. No surprise, because, you know, there's always one good snowstorm before the spring comes out. I hope you guys have been watching the little buds on the tree. Yesterday, if you were drawing trees with us, I told you to start observing nature because this is the best time of the year to watch everything sprout so if you were able to look out the window and some of you sent pictures that were awesome where you're outside drawing i love that so if you have access to your deck or your porch or a window you can look out the window and even today the little buds on the trees behind the computer i have a window and the little buds are just a little bit bigger so it's really fun to observe nature even if you do a sketch Every other day, once a week, you're going to see a difference. In a week, you're going to see a difference on those trees. And you'll just start to see the leaves and the flowers. Everything else come, kind of start to come out. All right, hopefully the sun comes out. So on this side, I'm going to do a half a circle and a half a circle. That's going to be the edge of the scarf. Can you see that? And then I'm going to kind of ooh, draw a line across like that. And then I'm going to do it down here. Cross like that. All right, that's a scarf. So I saw how cute you put the little lines on the socks of the leprechaun yesterday, adorable patterns. I'm going to create lines on the scarf. So I'm going to kind of curve the line, curve the line, curve the line, curve the line. I'll do the same thing. So this side is curving one way, and then this side, curve the line, curve the line, curve the line. And then maybe the one in the middle is just vertical, up and down, vertical. Okay. And if you want to put the long part of a scarf, you can put like a diagonal line, diagonal line, close the line, give them that little fringy part, the little fringe at the bottom of the scarf. And then how about some more curved lines? Curve line, curve line, curve line, curve line, curve line. I hope we don't have to put our scarves on. I think I packed my scarf up for the year. And again, a little fringe, 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 fringe. Curve line, curve line, curve line. Yours can look different than mine, okay? Of course. And his wings. How about his wings over here? Now, you can make your wings come up above the scarf if you want or just below. And then little feathers, you can just do little baby lines for his feathers, her feathers. You want to add little eyelashes. You could put some little eyelashes on there. That's hard to see. And maybe you want, remember I was showing you guys yesterday. I don't know what you're there. I made these out of tag board just to be silly. You got to put some glasses on here. 
I will go ahead and put some glasses on now. You don't have to. Okay. I'm not going to color mine in. I'm going to let you guys, you guys did an amazing job yesterday with those leprechauns. So I'm going to let you do your own thing with your owl. Okay. That was just for fun, just for practice, just to warm you up, set it aside, do it again later, color it later, do your own thing. So it's so funny because as the I come in here early, I set up, but as of course the day changes, the lighting changes in here. One day I'll have a studio. How about that? A real studio like Bob Ross. How about that? Someone could videotape me. All right. So I did, I did elephants a little bit larger. I had printed out giraffes, but they were just a little bit too small. So here are my elephant outlines. There's, there's my little elephant family. What I loved so much, you know, what inspired me was so many family pictures you guys were posting where you were doing the art all together as a family. Again, I can't talk about it too much cause I'm going to get choked up. <laughs> and, uh, I've, I, I just love that you guys are painting from babies up until grandma, grandpa, family, everyone in the family. That is amazing to me. And so when life hands you lemons, you make lemonade, right? We're all adjusting. So anyway, I wanted to show you guys some of the templates. that. I, so really, there's a lot of fancy machines out there right now. I don't want to name them, but they're fancy and they're... Uh, a little too complicated for this mind. I'm sure that I can learn and I'm all about learning guys. That's why I want you guys to learn how to paint or different techniques, but old school, old habits die hard. That means I'm used to doing things by hand and not using machines. So just like I showed you how to print stuff out or trace it, I have all these little things that I've created as stencils. So you, you could have a butterfly stencil. Here's a giant giraffe head stencil okay these are just things i keep i make them and then i keep them okay i have a couple of oh horse heads a little birdie on a branch okay so these are just again stencils that i created from the past and today oh here's a good one i love this one i used to use this with my middle school kids okay the lizard so whatever you guys decided to use for today, or even if you haven't decided yet, that's okay. So when I do my classes, I'm on a time schedule. Usually my paint classes go from anywhere from an hour to two hours. Because we're on that limited time frame, this is why I pre-trace it. Now, we're not. When I'm done with you guys here, you can always trace it after. So let's just say you don't have a stencil, but you still want to paint. You can paint the entire background, the trees, everything else. And then when it's dry, you can trace your stencil on there. You don't have to do it first. But again, because I'm teaching a class with, you know, people and we're like, okay, we're going to get this done in an hour or two. And then you take it home. We can't wait for it to dry for them to do the stencil. So that is why I am doing it ahead of time. Okay. So I'm using acrylic paint. I'm going to show you my palette, which is a styrofoam plate. All right, this is my palette. I have some white, some yellow, some red, and some orange, and I forgot the black, which is around here somewhere. So anyway, and again, you guys do your own thing. Pick your favorite colors. If you don't like purple, don't use purple. If you don't like orange, don't use orange. All right, so I'm going to use a big brush like I used the other days, which looks like this. This is called a flat paint brush. It looks like a square. It's really good to just cover large areas and that's why it looks like I'm painting so quick. Really, I'm just using a larger brush. You guys take your time. You don't have to paint as fast as I'm painting. Of course, I forgot to put up. So this one has a different stencil. My sister told me to put this up. Hi. Oh, bye. <laughs> I want to talk to you, but I don't want to be on screen. There. Uh, I just somebody wants you to show the owl again, please. Oh. Brooklyn. Yeah. Brooklyn wants you to. Hey, Brooklyn. Okay. Here's my owl. Okay, take a screenshot, maybe. Do you, me? No, not you, Brooklyn. Oh. oh, Brooklyn, take a screenshot. Yeah, I don't know how to do a screenshot. I know how to do a screenshot on my phone, and I'm lucky if I can do that. So, okay. 
Oh yeah, you know what I forgot to tell you guys too? All right, so here's the deal. I have not been sleeping well. Does that ever happen to you? You can't sleep well? I, I'm so, you know, all of the above. Every emotion that you a person can feel, that's what I've been feeling. And I'm not sleeping great. And I am addicted to my phone and the comments and the messages that I have been getting for days. So, and I love them. They bring me to tears. It's amazing. So what I'm, and I can't help myself. I keep looking and, I, and I'm sorry if I've missed some of your photos. I am trying to keep up with them. They're coming in by the drove. And uh, so if I haven't posted yours, I apologize. I want you guys to post your own stuff. So, so uh, Christina, thank you. She's a teacher friend of mine. She posted a picture with her two children and she checked in. So she sent me the directions today because I need direction. And I posted on the page, it says check in. So you should see somewhere it says check in. Click the check in. You can upload photos and you can write comments and you guys can all see each other's. So that way I don't have to do it all. And you got, you won't have to scroll down throughout everything to see it. That's what I'm asking you. Pay it forward. That's your job today. Your job is to pay it forward to me today. Check in for me, subscribe to YouTube and still do something kind for someone. So, all right, let's start painting. You guys know. All right, one more question. Um, um, Sorry. Yes. yes. Can you please tell us how we can use, this is Jacqueline. Can you tell us how we can use crayons instead? Absolutely. Oh my gosh, you guys, everything that I do, you can use any supplies. So what I would do, if you already trace this out, then you're using crayons. I, you know what? I, I just gave my art teacher friend all my crayons. So I was scavenging the house looking for them. She, anyways, so here's what I would do. And I'm just going to, do this with my Crayola. So pretend it's a crayon or a pencil, whatever. So here's what I would do. If you're using crayons, I would put your sun in and it could be as big or as small. So crayon doesn't work so great on canvas, but um, make your sun on there. So you could sketch it out. You can sketch out your ground. Okay. So, and again, even if you're painting, if you want to do this, go ahead. Can you guys see that? So sketch out what you want to do with your crayons. You can even add your trees because we practiced trees yesterday. So you're going to make amazing trees today. Uh, or you can do your trees later if you do it in black. So you can add your, you know, black on crayon with crayon. So you could add some trees in here. So you guys add trees, add your, you could draw some, but I, as I'm painting, you could do the same thing with crayon. If you don't know what I mean, look at the pictures from Monday and Tuesday. The sunsets that I saw with crayon and the kids were taking the crayon and mixing them together. So all the colors that I used in the sunset, were, they did the same thing with the crayons. It was amazing. Or the watercolor paint or the markers, the Crayolas. So, you know, I've been trying to adapt my lessons because of the comments that I'm reading. And again, I'm trying to read all of them. And I have kids who are stuck in hotel rooms with their family and they don't know when they're gonna be able to get home. And they're like, I just want my art supplies. So they're using whatever they can find in, in a hotel room. I am all about, okay, if it's a hotel pen, use a hotel pen, okay? You can do the whole drawing in pens. I have, I was showing you guys my uh, journals yesterday. I have lots of stuff, you know, where I'm doodling on an airplane. I'm just sitting there and I'm just doodling with a pen because I don't have anything else with me. So I am all about use whatever it is that you have. Uh, again, so if you have crayons, use crayons. If you have markers, use markers. Be creative. I want you to find whatever you have and use it. You, I mean, if you want to order stuff online, go ahead. But I'm really about using what products you have. So do what I'm doing, except use crayons. I like to color from light to dark, including with my paint. So if you guys are going to do the background, start with the lightest colors, like yellow. Think of the spectrum. So I would do yellow, then orange, then red. Okay, and if you have the colors in between, yellow, yellow, orange, 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 red, red, you can use those, but mix them together so it doesn't look like a rainbow unless you're trying to make a rainbow. Okay, if you do it stripey, it's going to look like a flag. Unless you want it to look like a flag, mix them together. Anything you're using, mix it together. Experiment. 
That's what I'm about. Experiment. We're all experimenting together. Okay. This whole process is one big experiment. We're exploring the world together and in the comfort of our own home. Okay. How wild is that? Wow, Wednesday. <laughs> All right, big brush. Doesn't have to be wet. If you wet it, that's great. Actually, I'm going to wet mine. I've had my paint out for a while. So I'm going to wet. When you the paint, when acrylic paint sits out for a while, it starts to get dry. It dries pretty quick. So I am going to start with my lighter color. And again, I'm just going to use, hor I'm going to go right through my Sharpie marker. Okay, that was the point of tracing this. I'm going to go right through it and I'm going to paint horizontal brush strokes all the way across. Now you can see, well, you know, you can't really see it that great. Where I've used the Crayola, it's starting to bleed. Bleeding is what it's called when it gets blurry and fuzzy and mixes in. But notice, the, so that's an experiment. I'm teaching you guys something. That's why I don't use Crayola on a canvas. I use Sharpie. Sharpie's not bleeding. Crayola's bleeding, okay? Now, if you guys want to experiment, with your markers, say you, you're using Crayola and you don't have paint, you can wet you can wet your Crayola markers and they'll bleed together, which is really cool. So uh, again, experiment. You don't have to have a paintbrush either. You could just add a little bit of water with your fingers and watch it bleed and fuzz together. So I'm gonna go from the yellow into my orange. I didn't wash my brush off. Right through, right through, but don't blend it in there. The um, bottom. Yeah, go ahead. Denise, what would you say to the folks? Some people are like wondering about the elephant that they don't have a tracer. How did you get the elephants on there? That part went a little bit fast. Well, sorry, sorry, you guys. I'm trying to. Sorry. Okay, so I gotta find my elephants. Let's just pretend I'm doing. Can I just pretend? There's my. There's my elephant. I like I still like the lizard. So here's my elephant. Sorry, I skipped that part. So if you have your tracer already. You put it wherever you want it. He could be flying. He could be a flying elephant. Put your elephant on your canvas or your paper. Trace it. So if you trace it with pencil first, go over it with Sharpie after if you have a Sharpie. Okay. You can use the one tracer if you want. You could do one and then flip them over. So you can, here, I'm going to show it this way. So let's say you want one going one way and then just trace it and flip it and one going the other way. So you put it, whatever you're doing, trace it pencil and then trace over it with sharpie if you have one or use a regular marker so you trace whatever it is that you have i'm sorry if i'm going too fast um and if they don't and if they don't have a tracer just um freehand it if freehand it again if you guys don't have a tracer you can we just practice an owl because you make it an owl of course so you could put you know again think this what we're doing you can put a baby you can put five owls in here you could put a bird in here you could trace your hand i mean get create all right i'm going to show you guys something that i did this again if you don't have a tracer you could trace your foot all right this is <laughs> this is a painting i did where i traced my foot all right i want you guys to use what you have you have a foot i hope so if you have a foot trace your foot if you have a good hand trace a hand or you can make your hand into a turkey, okay? Make your hand into a turkey. Make it into a peacock. What I, I want you guys to think. I don't want to give you answers. I want you to explore. What could you use? What could you use if you don't have it? If you want to draw a perfect circle, what could you use? Uh, you could use tape. You could use a cup. You guys, I used to do a hunt in the classroom. I'd be like, okay, I want you guys to find circles. And then I would make them go around the room and hunt for anything that they could trace with circles. So you guys could trace what something that you like. So I want you to think of something that you like. Hopefully you have something that you like in your house and you can either copy it, you can forget about it until later. You can just paint or color with me and forget about the animal altogether and then do the animal later. Okay, you're, we're, we have lots of time. So if you don't have an animal on here, I want you to still paint with me let it dry and then add something later to it. If you have old magazines, right? I don't know how popular magazines are today, but you guys, when I was a kid, oh my gosh, I love magazines. I used to cut apart magazines. I would take people's heads off and glue them to animals' bodies and make them really, really silly. So you could cut out something from a magazine and use it as a stencil, or you can use it for inspiration and try to draw it. So I want you guys to, oh, where's my box? I didn't say it yet today. Hold on. 
<laughs> I want you guys to think outside the box. <laughs> Sorry, I took a picture and posted that today. All right, so that's my toolbox. I got a bunch of stuff in there that I've been collecting. So uh, I hope that helps. So if you don't have an animal on your jet, paint with me, color with me, forget about the animal. We'll, we'll do it later. Okay, you could just paint and add stuff on it later. I hope that helps. I hope I'm answering your questions. Okay. So I'm all about mixing together. When I would mix this color with the kids, I would call it macaroni and cheese. You know that fake cheesy color? That's what it is, but it's a really cool color. Kind of like the, the banner. <laughs> so Don't eat it though. It's it's, it doesn't taste like macaroni and cheese. It just looks like macaroni and cheese. So, all right, let's just keep working our way up. So I did some yellow, some orange, and now I'm gonna go into my red. And the color might look different on your computer screen. I don't know about you guys, but I don't know if you've ever ordered anything online, like a cool shirt, and then you get it, and it's completely not the color it looked like on the screen, because the computer is different. The computer screen is different. Don't ask me the technical part about it. It just doesn't look always the same. So can you guys still see that? Okay, I'm gonna ask you a question, but I don't want you to stop painting because some people's paints were drying and they, they wanna be able to blend. So, uh, so go ahead and keep painting um, as you were, but somebody said, how am I gonna blend colored pencils? How do you mix the colors? Can you just talk through that? Sure. I actually have, all right, so I don't have crayons, but I do have colored pencils. So I'm going to experiment with you guys. I don't know how great this is going to show up on the screen, but I'll do my best if I can get it open. Give me a second. All right. I'm, gonna, I'm only going to use like the darker colored pencils just so you could see it. I hope it shows up. Are you guys getting a glare or is that okay? Lots of sound. So there's some red. So I'm more, I'm kind of turning my, my uh, pencil sideways instead of the little tip. So if you were writing something, la 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 la, you'd use the tip of it. I can't tell if you guys can see that right. So I'm using more of the side of my pencil, and I'm just kind of coloring and mixing it together. Can you see that? So you could do the same thing with crayon. You could do the same thing with pencil. Oops. And if you're using canvas and you don't want to, you know, waste it, practice on your paper. Again, I'm teaching you guys tricks that you can do on your own. You do not need me. When, when we're done, you guys can keep experimenting and exploring. So that would be, again, a way to do it with a pencil, a color pencil. Even a regular pencil, you guys can shade with a regular pencil. You would just use value, so it would be one color. The harder you press, the darker it's going to be. And the lighter you press, the gentler you go, the lighter it's going to be. So we all have different tools and stuff. And everyone's artwork style is different. Different is good. It's not going to look like mine. It's going to look like yours. So art is like, you know, when you create something, it's going to be similar to your handwriting. Not that it's going to look like your handwriting. It's just going to look different than everybody else's. You guys learn the ABCs. You write the ABCs. We all know it's the ABCs, but everybody's ABCs are different. Okay? So that's the way I explain art. Now, if your paints are dry, which mine are too, okay? So here's my paints. I'm just going to take some water, and I'm just going to add water to it. And then that way, it'll flow easier. And on this note, Denise, Sarah yeah. can't see her pigs anymore. So oh. what, if, what if you've covered up your 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 guides, guidelines. So if your 
stuff is covered, I can give you several things you can do. One would be, and this is the messier version. So if you don't like to be messy, don't do this one. You can do lots of things. Take a paper towel. Wow. Wipe it off. It's almost like an eraser. Okay. Oh, look, there's Alfred the elephant. I'm just being silly. Ellie, Ellie the elephant. Look, she's back. Okay. So you can use, but you know, you might get a little dirty. So if you don't mind that, so you can use a paper towel to wipe it off and it should reappear. You can also use water. So if you just take your paintbrush and don't add any more paint, but add water, it'll make it more transparent. So you guys, transparent is something see-through. Acrylic paint is very opaque. Opaque means you can't see through it. I cannot see through this paintbrush. This is not opaque. Oh, all right, I don't want to advertise, but this bottle is transparent, transparent. So when you can see through it, it's transparent. Windows are transparent. My paint cup with that dirty water in it, that water's transparent. The more water I add to the acrylic paint, the more transparent or see-through it's going to be. The less water that I add, so let's just, I'm going to scoop up some paint. Look what's going to happen. Oops, my elephant's gone. He's, I lost my line. Look at, look at that. The line's gone. Well, my paint is too thick. Does that mean I have to throw this away and start over? No. That means you either spread it out, spread it out till it reappears. So you spread it out water it down, wipe it off. The third thing you can do or fourth or how, whatever, there's lots of different ways to solve this problem, is just keep going, let it dry. And when it's dry, you can redraw your, your animals. So again, if you didn't do your animals yet, you can do it when, once the whole thing's dry. So if you lost your animal and your paint's dry and it's not coming back and you're on the floor crying, cut it out because you're going to still go. You're going to paint the whole thing. And then when it's dry, you're going to retrace it over the dry paint. Probably have to use a Sharpie because it's hard to use a pencil on top of dry acrylic paint. So that's, that's my recommendation. Got it. Is that cool? So now I'm going to go back into my red blend, 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 blend. Okay. And again, use, you guys use the colors you like. Mix them together. You want to see the brush strokes. It should not look like your iPad. Your iPad has these perfect flat little colors. You, this is a painting. This is a real painting. It's not a print. You want to see the brush strokes. That's what makes it interesting. Got it? If you want to throw white in there, throw some white in there. It'll soften it up. Look at that. Can you guys see that? So Jen, thank you for, you know, helping out and telling me what's going on because I'm not really good at multitasking, you guys. That means doing a lot of things at one time. I'm not good at that at all. Lots of my sister is really good at Darcy. Hi, Darcy. She can multitask 10 things and I just, I don't function that way. So, all right. And I'm going to just keep going up. Now I have purple on my plate and there's purple on that sky. If I mix the purple with that orange, I'm not gonna get a really pretty color. It's gonna end up being like a brown. I don't want brown in my sky. You want brown in your sky, you go for it. You can have brown in your sky. But I don't want brown. So I, I didn't wash off my brush. I just added more red. And then I could just jump into some white, horizontal brush strokes. How about some purple? No, I'm not even adding water. Add the water if, you're, if your paint's getting dry. There's some purple. Purple, throw some white on there if you want it lighter. I, got, I bumped into the orange. So it might start to turn a little bit brown. So no one knows that I, did, that I accidentally bumped into the orange, okay? Total accident. No one knows but you and me. Don't tell anybody. It was an accident. I meant to create that. So lots of accidents make incredible art. 
no one knows that you did not mean to do something except for the people that you tell. So we're all experimenting together, guys. And again, you can rewatch this later under videos. I think that's good. All right. How are we doing? Are you guys all good? Everybody having fun? Don't stress. The last thing I want this to do is stress you out. You're supposed to have fun. Have fun. Relax. And, you know, have a good time. I hope you're doing it in groups again. Like, you know, your household groups. I, I forgot where I put my black paint. But I thought I was organized today and then I got sidetracked. All those beautiful comments sidetracked me. So, I, you know. Let's see if I can find it. Give me a second. Let's see. Aha! I got it. All right. So this is again. I don't. I, I have a little bottle of black paint. It's acrylic, and I'm gonna. I'm waiting just a couple minutes, but I'm gonna do my sun next. But my orange, because I was showing you guys, is pretty wet and pretty thick. Actually, this would be a good time to take a little break. I want to talk to you guys. So I'll do my sun next, but I want it to dry. So what I want to talk to you guys about is tomorrow's project. So we are going to do a collage, but I don't want to limit it to that because, again, I have people who don't have access to, you know, cool objects in their house. So let's see. If you do have seashells, this is just one project that I did, you know, on my own. Now, these are seashells on a heavier – this is actually called foam core. So – um, I, I did the heart and then Elmer's glue. A glue stick will not hold a heavy object. A glue stick is great for paper, but for heavier objects like little seashells, use a bottle of liquid Elmer's glue. I went somewhere and we had to create a project of like a fun room. So <laughs> this was just a, you know, I did a collab. Remember I was telling you I love to cut up magazines. So on the back here, this was like a dream room with like a cool light fixture and a cool rug and cool outfit and pillows. And, and then I put my favorite words on here. Renewal, always up for a party, uh, living the dream. What else did I put on here? Anyway, so that's, again, You could, if you're bored and you have magazines, you can create a collage. Same thing. You can use your Elmer's glue, mat, or you can use a glue stick for paper. So if you're using magazines, you can use a glue stick. So that is just one example of a collage. I'll have more for tomorrow. Um, and then, let's see what else. Bottle of Elmer's glue. It doesn't have to be Elmer's. You know, I just happen to have Elmer's. Denise, can Sandy's granddaughter um, use a sponge to blend the colors in her owl? Sure. You guys can, again, you experiment. Go for it. Try a sponge. I've never done a sponge, but I think it would be cool. I think you'd get a really good texture. So I was going to talk about texture. I could talk about it now. So if you take a sponge, if you guys have an extra sponge at your house, and dip it in paint and press it, you're going to get a really cool texture. Uh, so you can totally experiment with a sponge. Absolutely. Again, I say use whatever you have. Give it a try and see what you know comes out. So texture, if you guys touch your skin, that has a texture. Your hair has a different texture. So your skin, my skin right now is feeling a little rough. I think I need some lotion. Your hair could be, you know, soft. Your clothes have a texture, okay? Your, let's see, let's think of a filing board. Have you guys ever felt a filing board, like sandpaper? That's a very rough texture. Your wall could have a light texture. Your carpet could have a texture. If you guys have shoes on, feel the bottom of your shoes. That has a texture to it. 
Another really fun thing that I used to do with my students, we would go on a texture hunt. And you guys could do this tonight or after the video is over. So again, you take a thin piece of paper, like a piece of computer paper, and you go on a texture hunt. On the same piece of paper, you would take your crayons, use the side of your crayon. You could rub the bottom of your shoe and get a texture. You can rub, don't rub anything that you're not allowed to. But anything in your house or wherever you're at that has a texture to it, it'll, you, you go over it with the crayon and the texture of it will come on your paper, such as the edge of this plate. Can you see that? That has a texture to it. So again, I just want you guys to experiment with different things. Play, have fun, doesn't matter. It's more about the process than the product, okay? I know you all want to have your artwork in the art museum, just like I do, but it's about the process, having fun, learning from it. We really learn from our mistakes and grow from, you know, things that go wrong. That's why we experiment. And then you learn and you do it again and you do it again and you do it again and you do it again. So I've taught for 20 years and look, you guys are teaching me. So sometimes I go too fast. Sometimes I talk too fast. Sometimes I forget a step. So it's just part of the learning experience. Uh, let's see what else do I want to tell you guys. So I think it's getting drier. So I am going to do a half circle for my son. I'm just going to use white because the paint is still pretty wet. And so what's going to happen is where I do the white, the background colors are going to mix in there. So pretty cool though. So I, now I'm changing the brush stroke. Instead of doing horizontal brush strokes, now I'm going curved. I'm going to follow that. I like when the brushstroke follows whatever it is I'm painting. So I'm curving it. Oops, see, look, I lost Alfred's head. <laughs> I think I called him different every time. Alfred, Ellie. He's Alfred, she's Ellie. And it's hard to make it really half circle from the side, but I'm doing my best. And again, you can make it go down as far as you want and make your sun as big as you want. So we did a sunset the other day. If you joined us, it's very similar. So I'm just adding to what we did. So instead of a sunset, a Lake Erie, we did a Lake Erie sunset. You did a sunset wherever you are. I got purple on that. Well, we've got Italy here and oh, yeah. we have Spain here, Canada. Um, so we're, we're going to see sunsets from all over the world. Oh, my gosh. I love it. Hi, Italy, Spain, Canada. Who did I miss? Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited. We're in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. I am, too. <laughs> Thank you. Jen is in Cleveland, Ohio also. Jen reached out to help me because, you guys, again, this is – a new experiment for me and she said I can help you so out of the pay it forward she's paying it forward to me because she's helping me through this because I'm winging it you guys you're doing great <laughs> thank you so all right we've got England and Australia in the house just England like Australia oh my gosh wow I, you guys, I don't want to cry. Okay. Don't make me cry. It'll make my painting run. You want to see my painting drip all over the room? Because really, you guys are choking me up. I have Israel, to Israel just joined. Hi, Israel. <laughs> so you guys, I'm pretty sure that sunsets look the same all over the world. Pretty, you know, pretty amazing. Sunsets are one of my most favorite things in the world. So... I'm so thankful and appreciative that you guys are joining me from around the world. So in the beginning, when I started this on Monday, well, it started on Friday, I had 2,000 followers on my page, most of which were local, you know, people that would come paint with me every month or a couple times a month. And of course, most of them are mothers and they were panicked that they were now going to be teachers <laughs> and what how they were going to juggle as if mothers don't have enough to juggle which they do they you know are now you know trying to find places for their children things to do activities and so I just you know posted hey you guys want me to do a free activity online 
I had no idea this was going to happen. So I went from, <laughs> I don't want to cry, I went from like 2,000 followers to today about 25,000 followers. And I, when I created the event, I, I put 12 o'clock and then people started asking me what time zone. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, what time zone? I called it lunch and learn. It's now breakfast and learn, lunch and learn, dinner and learn, next to learn, anytime learn, international learn, okay? So I, again, it's just amazing. So I would love it if you guys share this with your friends, you know, text them, email it, check in. If you haven't checked in yet, can you check in? Juliana, Yasmin, and Eliza from Illinois. Hi. <laughs> All right. Because it's hard. Again, I can't multitask. Reading and painting? No, I can't do both. So I got to take a break and <laughs> read. So, all right. Now that I'm done getting choked up. Woo. Anyway, are you guys having fun? Because really, I just want to have fun. Don't make me cry. Crying is a good emotion. I don't want you to hold it in. So I was saying yesterday, I paint with every emotion. Maybe when I'm really angry, maybe my painting looks a little darker. Maybe my colors are a little bit, a lot more black, you know, but I'll paint when I'm sad, when I'm happy, when I'm scared, when I don't know what's going on in the world, I turn to art because I love it and it calms me down. So I can't play music in the background here because of the copyright, but I highly recommend turning on music for the background so that while you're painting, you can listen to music. Uh, it's really soothing. So give it a try. All right. You guys that far? Are you all caught up? Whether you're using crayons or not. So the next thing I'm going to do is take a smaller brush and go into my black. Does it have to be really black? No. Could I do my elephants gray? Of course I could do them gray. If your painting's too wet, can you just watch and do something else and let it dry and do it later? Of course. So again, this is going to be on the video, uh, under the uh, videos tab on the page. All right. And just, again, paint them in. What did I call them? Alfred? Alfred the elephant? I think you called her Ellie. Ellie, this is Ellie the girl. This is uh, oh, oh. I think I haven't given the baby one. You guys come up with some good baby names. Baby elephant. What starts with an E or something like that. So we have Alfred, Ellie, and we'll see what we get from the chat. Now, I was also thinking, you guys, another good way, first of all, a lot of you were like, I'm on spring, or my kids are on spring break, and we're not starting lessons yet till next week. So I highly recommend you don't stop learning, even if you're on spring break. You should right. always be learning, okay? We have, we have some elephant names coming in. I'm sorry, I just have right, to sorry. Right. With you. Uh, Eli, Eliza, Elbert, says Carrie. Um, let's see here, Eloise. Ooh. Baby Eleonora, Aww. Edward, Elmer, Eleanor, Bobby. 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 <laughs> we have Jim, uh, Emma, Ethan, uh, a lot of good ones. Everett, gosh, Eugene, Clyde, <laughs> Enzo. Love it. Bob. Love it. So the point of, you know, naming these elephants is why not create a story about your painting? So I could create a story about, you know, taking a journey to, you know, going on an African safari and, you know, what it was like and riding an elephant and, or, you know, my goal is to go to Africa. I went to Thailand. We went on an elephant hunt. So actually I was going to, I'll talk about it while I'm painting, but so Miami University of Ohio has amazing courses uh, in general, but especially for teachers. And I have done a lot of earth expeditions, they're called, with Miami University. So as a teacher we in Ohio, I renew my license every five years. I'm still a certified Ohio teacher. And 
All right, I'm going to tell you a secret. I'm not, I, I struggle in school sometimes. Sometimes it's really hard for me to focus and do school work and book work. And so Miami University has these earth expeditions classes where you go out of the country and explore for two weeks. That's my kind of learning. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. So I got to go to the schools in Thailand and see how the kids in Thailand learn. I went to Costa Rica. And so I went to the jungle in Thailand. I went to the jungle in Costa Rica and I was able to explore and learn how the kids over there learn which is similar to ours, except, you know, we all bought new boots for the jungle and the kids are running around in their bare feet and the bugs are ginormous, which is a little intimidating. But I lived. Was I scared? Yeah, I was scared. My mom was scared for me. But, you know, it was those are the best experiences of my life. So and I have to tell you guys, this week is one of the best experiences of my life and scary at the same time. I don't, but it's, it's scary and amazing at the same time. That's all I can tell you. So, uh, um, and one of the trips was to Wyoming. They're, they're not all international, although the earth expeditions one is, I did also do Wyoming where we went and studied how to incorporate science into any curriculum. And uh, we went to Wyoming and we hiked the mountains and we studied, you know, for two weeks out there. And before I said adapt to your environment, right now we're all adapting to our environment. It's the unknown. And every day we take it one step at a time and we're all adapting. And it reminded me of Wyoming because when we got to the top of the mountain, there were bees and the bees were really chubby and they probably didn't fly higher than a foot from the ground like they did they were just chubby little baby wings and you know we're flying so low and the scientist doc bob said um that they adapted to their environment if the bees were regular sized bees like we're used to they would get blown off the mountain so they adapted in time so that because it's really windy at the top of that mountain and they would you know, they just evolved to the point where their wings were smaller, they were chubby, so they actually couldn't fly up high, and, but they survived. So, you know, I'm not saying I want to get any chubbier or, you know, have small wings. I'm just saying that we, we're all going to adapt. So, all right, that's a tangent. I didn't mean to go off of that. I had another teacher friend, Jess, hi Jess, contact me yesterday. Uh, she was on my Wyoming trip and she her daughters were watching this and she's like oh my gosh that's Denise from Wyoming so it's amazing all these people that I you know have come across my path throughout my travels have seen me on Facebook and I have to say like anything else in life you can use things like Facebook in a good way or not a good way that would be your choice you can use TV in a good way or not a good way. What you allow into your mind, that's up to you. Do you want to pollute it or do you want to do good? You got to think about that. You're either growing your mind or not. So I say grow it. Growth mindset. Grow it in a good way. Fill it with positive stuff. And before I started saying, you know, I know it's spring break. Do you know how much kids lose after you know spring break they come back and they have not retained so much stuff of what they learned so you should never even if you're on spring break do something where you're learning something every day you know learn a new vocabulary word uh, you're learning a new technique in art i hope so just learn something new learn how to cook all i'm saying is you know learn something new not a maneuver on minecraft not that there's anything wrong with that. Just balance. Balance. A little balance. All right. How's our elephants coming? So you can name your elephants whatever you want. Create a story about your elephants. You know? What are your elephants doing? Looks like family to me. Looks like a family gathering of elephants. Now. If you were here on Monday, we put birds in the sky. Oh my gosh, you guys added so many cool things to your sunsets. 
I don't want to limit you. I want you to think the sky is the limit, you guys. Add whatever you want to. Okay? Don't don't let me implant it in your mind. I want you to think about it. What do you want to do? So Beth's doing a graceful Siberian Husky. Her name is Mika, and she's based off my real dog. Oh, I love it. I love it. And Jess is doing a cat chasing butterflies. Oh, I love it. So if you guys want to add tall grass, you would just do some like vertical wispy lines coming up like we did when we did the sunset, but they're a little bit smaller. I don't want to cover up my elephant too much. Or you can just leave it, you know, like that. I just wouldn't make it perfectly straight. You know, it could be a little wavy. Oh, trees. I didn't save room for trees, you guys. Oh my gosh. I forgot. I'm looking at my sample over there. I mean, I was like, oh, let's do a family. I got, I saw all these cool pictures of family and I forgot about the tree. So let's see. I'm going to make a tree th go through the baby elephant. Okay. So again, you can put your tree wherever you want. So you're going to do, it's wider at the base, thinner at the top. So as you go up, go lightly. So your bristles smaller. So if I was, you know, well, you are some of your kids. So the heavier you press, the wider your bristle is going to spread. The lighter you press, the thinner it's going to be. Okay. So tickle, tickle. If you want a really tiny line, go tickle your canvas. That would be really, really thin, very gentle. So I'm going vertical and you could split like a V. You can make it a W. You can make it split however you want. And then literally, I was just going to tap it with my bristles. Tap, 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 How's that look? Okay. So you guys can do one tree, two trees, three trees, no trees. You could do whatever you want to. It can overlap. So look at what right into my little baby elephant. Hi, Gia and Genesis. <laughs> All right, let's see what else. How are we doing on time? I kind of, oh my, I went, I did an hour today. Are you guys okay with that? Are you bored yet? <laughs> so I usually try to keep it, you know, around an hour. I know you guys have stuff to do today, but I'm glad I was able to answer some of your questions. And so now you should have videos for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So I didn't post again. I just posted Thursday uh, today because I'm adapting the lessons according to what people are saying to me and what they have access to. So I'm still going to do a painting tomorrow because a lot of people don't have anything to do a collage with. Uh, and I'll post the supplies later. So please make sure you check in, you follow me. If you guys can, please subscribe on YouTube, Artist at Heart Paint Party. If I get 100 subscribers then we can go live on there as well at the same time so if you don't have like if you don't have access to facebook and your parents have to get you on but you can go on youtube then that would be a good alternative as well uh, guess uh, what just want to tell you it looks like since you've been live you have been live on youtube today um, oh. so you've been live this whole time over on youtube so woohoo all right well i again i don't know a lot about youtube so i guess i am you know I'll have to go check it out as well. If you guys still subscribe, you know, that would be good. So tomorrow, same time, same place. Did I forget to say, oh, yeah. So use it or lose it. I forgot that banner. You see that banner? That's what I was trying to tell you guys before. Spring break or not, use it or lose it. It's going to go away. Keep that tool sharp. Whatever it is, learn something new. And wait, I got to show you my fancy, <laughs> my fancy expensive Think out of the box. You like that? Think out of the box. All right. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Same time, same place. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.